Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Uh, today we're going to start a new project uh, using Revit architecture, or I guess actually this is just Revit, this one that I'm using here. Uh, so you'll notice that you'll have some of the other uh, like the systems structure tab is in Revit architecture as well, but there's some more stuff in here now that we're into 2014. Uh, but anyway, what I'd like to do is just cover how you get going in a project if you're starting from scratch. Uh, the first thing that you'll want to do is take a look at your design concept, uh, any sketches that you've done, and figure out what your floor levels are going to be at. So typically you have eight foot ceilings in a, a residential application, you might have higher ceilings than that, but that's more or less what you're going to be uh, trying to find out for this first part of setting up your project. So you'll start off in level one in your template, but you can actually scroll down in the project browser. So project browser is essentially where all your documentation is going to be um, navigated from. So if you want to look at your floor plans, you go into floor plans, you can see that level one is highlighted. That's the active view. Uh, what we want to do is go into our elevations. So I'll double click on the east elevation and as you can see I've got two corresponding levels from the template that go with these two floor plans. So if I want to create a new level I'm just going to simply come up to uh, this datum tab and as you can see I just switch quickly back from structure. The datum tab is in there as well so it doesn't really matter um, but I typically come from the architecture tab and I'm going to click on level. So when I click on level, it starts the level tools. You'll notice that I'm now in modify place level tab and I've got a, a number of tools that I can use. So I can draw in a new level or I can use this pick lines option. So I'm going to review both of those for you and some of the different uh, aspects of modifying your levels here. So if I want to draw a new level, I simply just click anywhere and start my level. So you'll notice that where I started this level, is where the level line is and it's at 15 foot 6 right now that's okay I can place this wherever I want and if you bring it over here to the left you'll notice that I'm getting this dashed blue line that's telling me that it's lined up so I'm gonna click there and you'll notice now that it's saying level 3 I don't actually want this to be called level 3 so if I click on the level itself till it's highlighted I can click in this field here that says level 3 right now and I'll just call this uh, instead of level 3 I'll call this um, top plate so I know where my structure is okay so I just type that in and hit enter and it gives me this message saying do you want to rename the corresponding view that I'm going to reply yes to and you'll notice that now I've got this new level here in floor plans that says top plate. So the next thing is I want all my annotations to be on the right side. So simply come over here and uncheck this bubble and the annotation disappears. I'll come back over to the right hand side now and I'm just going to grab this node and drag it over till it's lined up and then click on the checkbox that I just disabled on the other side and it brings that in. Now maybe I don't want this to only be um, 5 foot 6 up so what I need to do here is modify that. So maybe I want this to be 10 feet so um, instead of 20 foot 6 or 15 foot 6 let's actually put in 20. So I just modify that the same way I did with the label hit enter and it moves that level up. As you can see I've got a dimension here as well in between and I can modify that if I wanted to by simply just typing in 9 it's going to recognize that I want that to be 9 feet if I want that to be 9 foot 6 then I would actually have to type in 9 put the foot symbol in there and then put 6 you can put the inches symbol in but you don't have to it'll recognize that the next unit over is going to mean inches so now that I have those in place I can select um, any of these at any time and if I drag that node over to realign it, the rest will come with it. So that's a really nice feature and really uh, speeds up those modifications once you're starting to create your views in, uh, in Sheets. So uh, that's how you create the level using the Draw tool. Uh, let's explore the other way if we're going to make another one. 
um, I'll come back up to my level tool and I'll click on this one instead. So this is pick lines. And if I hit pick lines, it means essentially that I'm going to be using one of these other levels for a reference. So what I'll need to do is put an offset value in here. I'll put that one in at 10 feet. And now when I hover over any of these lines, depending on what side of the line I'm hovering over, you'll see that I've got a temporary dashed line. Um, it looks pretty faint here, but uh, it is there if you look closely. So if I click on that line, a new level is created, and I can check that to get the label, and you'll see that now I've got level 4 in here as well. In some situations, you might get, uh, you might essentially have something like a, a window head and you don't necessarily need a plan view associated with it. It's just a level that you want to uh, use for constraints. So what you can do is come into level and uncheck make plan view. And now if I repeat that process from last time, you'll notice that the new level that I'm creating, when I turn on, oh, I gotta, sorry, just, uh, take that one away. When I select this now and turn on the label, when it's unselected you'll notice now that it's got a black label as opposed to a blue one and that just means that this doesn't have a view associated to it. Uh, so you can you can come in here and actually make that uh, a, a view. Um, I believe it's up here. Floor plan and then it asks me, new floor plan, well you have this level here that isn't a view already. If you want to, you can modify that. And now if I go back to that elevation, you'll notice that this label is blue as well. I can open up that floor plan by simply double clicking on that blue symbol and I'm, I'm back into that view. So that's creating levels. Um, there's some other other tools in here. Sometimes you'll get two levels that are uh, very close and then you end up with a situation like this. In this situation what you'll want to do is break the level line using this elbow feature. So when you hover over it you can see that it gives you the little label. I just click on that once and now what it's done is it's giving me two more grips that I can modify. So I just grab those grips and simply drag them out and now I have the level distance which is accurate and I've got some clear legible annotations here okay so I'm not gonna make a video for creating grids I'm just gonna quickly um, go over to level one and I'm just gonna quickly make some grid lines essentially creating grid lines is the same thing as creating uh, levels you're using your draw tools only in here you have some arc uh, draw tools as well for creating arc grid lines so those are pretty great and one really neat thing about creating grid lines is you can modify the grid line so that um, it will um, keep columns associated with it so if you're doing a, a large structure and you have a column grid when you place your columns along any of these grids, right? So I'm just going to put a, a typical column in here. Let me find it. I'll put in structural, right? So I'm just going to place some of these. What's happening here? Okay, so I'm getting some warnings that are just saying that these columns aren't uh, visible in this view. So anytime that that happens, what I'll do is I'll come up here to my default 3D view and I'll just see where these are in relation. So if I select the column, um, I'll find where those top and bottom constraints are. So I want the base level to be uh, one with no offset. So while I'm at this, I might as well select all three of them and just make that base offset zero. kind of getting into some things that I didn't want to. But now I should be able to come back to level one here and, uh, and see where those columns are. So something I just wanted to point out quick was if I select any of these columns right now, I can uh, 
I can ask it to stay with the grid line and it says move with grids. Okay, so I'm just going to uncheck this one and now if you take a look at when I move this grid over, the two columns that had that enabled, they stay with my grid line. So that's a nice feature for columns um, regarding grids. Okay, so in the next video, what we're going to take a look at is how you can use a pre-existing DWG to create levels. Um, it's very similar, but I wanted to go over the process of bringing in a DWG. So stick around for that, and we should have that video available soon. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye now.